Hello, patrons. Wow. Thank you for being Thank you. here. Thank you. We're happy to see you. We're happy to know you. We're happy. We're just happy. We're we're pretty happy. I mean, I'm not it's that Friday. happy. I'm kind of tired, actually. Yeah, you can be tired and happy. Yeah, I, I'm generally happy. I'm not like actively happy. No, it's you a know. it's a low key happy sort of. Yeah, we're keeping it we're keeping it low. We're keeping it chill today. Yeah, we're gonna oh. be answering your questions, practicing skills. And hopefully just having a nice time reminding you that uh, that if you're struggling with your with your art, you just take a minute to practice. It's so easy, actually. Yeah. And we're going to show you I, how easy it is. We'll show you. If, if us idiots can do it, you can do it. You know what's um, something I was thinking about, Nathan? What? What was something you was thinking about? It's like, I was thinking about how we, we both have, we both have gotten pretty good at art over the years, I'd say. Hey, thanks. Compared to, to most people. Yeah. But I think I can speak for the both of us when I say that I don't think either one of us really worked that hard at getting better at art. <laughs> I think you you worked harder at it than I did. That's for sure. But I and think, if you, and if I, you don't think you worked that hard, then yeah. What I'm saying is, compared to some people, I don't think we worked that hard. But what we did do is work for like 15 years. Yeah. At like a moderate pace. Yeah. You'd be and, patient. You gotta be and, patient. And that's with what yourself. I'm saying. Like you don't even have to do that good. Yeah. As long as you just keep doing so it, just stick with it. It's like yeah. if on a long enough time span, you'll get pretty good. Yeah, if you keep at it, if you keep it on on at it, keep it on at it. Julia. Julia walked by in the background. Cryptid Julia. Yeah. There, there she, she is. is. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> no, I Whoa. hope I hope none of the patrons saw that. Oh, patrons. That's for patrons. <laughs> the, the, the middle finger was just was just for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's doling good. it all out. This is good. It's bringing back memories of uh, yeah. being in the uh, the old office. Oh, I get a I get a sort of middling yeah handshake. Not sure which way we're gonna fall. It kind of depends on my behavior. I think. Yeah, I get that. That's reasonable. Yeah. Um, let, should we get into it? Let's start, dude. Let's start. We're just today's going to be a real a real mishmash hodgepodge, and I think that's fine. Art I think practice. that's appropriate. Sometimes art practice can be focused, and sometimes it can be kind of all over the place. And we're here to to do the all over the place. Yeah, I think um, what we're going to show you here today. One of the things we're going to show you is that sometimes a good way to practice is just to follow your impulses yeah. to work on whatever thing jumps into your brain at the time that you think would be the most exciting to work on or do. Yeah. We're going to do that. And, and you're going to help us too at some point. We're probably going to take some chat suggestos. Yes, you, you chat. As we go. Um, I see Zoom is doing that fun thing with my camera. Where it sometimes blips. Yeah, mine's mine's doing it too, so. I love that. We're a couple of blippy boys. We're a couple of blippy boys, and that's okay. I'm um, a blippy boy. So Um and, and this this is actually like this is something that's come up uh, a few times recently in um in like Ask the Hosts on the Discord is people being like, you know, I have a few minutes to practice per day but I don't feel inspired. What should I do? Um, and ag again, like I, I find, and, and I can only speak from, from my own experience. I find like a big obstacle when it comes to practicing art is putting, putting too much pressure on it to, to do it right, to do oh, it yeah. good, um, to make something good in the short time. And it's like, well, it'd be easier to just not do anything. Totally. So, um, 
something it's something you have to actively or at least something i have to actively push back against and fight against and so that's sort of been a theme for any of the draw classes that i've hosted recently is like the first thing i like to do is just is is just do is just sort of scribble just 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 to and i think i think this is just like a good it's a good way to just sort of get out of your head get out of that that verbal section of your brain that's telling you like no you're not good putting pressure on stuff and just remember that like this is what drawing is you can completely turn your brain off and just let your hand and whatever you're drawing with fill a page with with nothing nothing particularly interesting or good and it's still valuable to do it's still a worthwhile thing to do yes like who cares it's like warm up it's like it's like doing doing freaking jumping jacks or like just getting on the elliptical you know you're not you're not practice you're not lifting you're not practicing form or anything you're just getting the blood flowing you're going for that that morning walk yeah you're going you're for like, a stroll you're like i need to do a workout but i don't want to so i'm just gonna start bouncing around just bounce around just get just move I'm your like legs move your arms ready to move and see and remember that nothing bad happens when you just do this and and if i if i'm sounding heated it's i'm talking to myself <laughs> when i <laughs> when i say this this is as much for me as it is for you. Nothing bad happens, Nathan. Nathan. Although so, yeah. I don't want you on my lap right now. I'm sorry to inform you of this. Just do a scribble. And we'll do a slower scribble. Slightly more intentional scribble. Still a scribble. But let's, you know, let's notice the shapes we're making and see if they, they speak to us. If we find inspiration in the shapes these are some witch shapes it's sort of like a witchy it's a witchy shape sort of a witchy shape maybe and 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 that can actually help you figure out sort of where where your head's at because you'll just draw the shapes that are in your that are in your heart you know today i'm in like a witchy mood i don't know why we can explore that though we can explore that and that can help guide you as you're practicing <laughs> My but this is always a little menace right now. And sometimes your cat's being a little menace and that can inform your art as well. But this is always where I like to start when I'm going to practice because it it sets the tone. And I think setting the tone is important. You want to be coming from a place where you're being patient with yourself, where you're being accepting of the thoughts that you're having with the way your body is feeling because it's it's very personal making art it's it has to it's it's expressive there's like technical skill involved but ultimately it's an expression of you and how you're feeling yeah and just sort of checking in with yourself while you're doing this is you're converting the stuff going on in your brain into into the real world yeah you're translating it exactly direct representation so be patient with yourself let yourself warm up let yourself get out of that hustle and grind mentality and into a creative open space where you're being open with your thoughts you're being open with your feelings and you're being open to to try stuff i forgot to set up my screen in the appropriate way so that i could also draw while you were drawing oh do you do we need to take a break so you can do that potentially okay maybe do i want to do that is that going to be hard it might be hard 
It might be hard. You can just, I mean, we can just take turns. You're allowed to just chill. chill. You can just chill. I'm going to chill until it's my turn. You actually have stuff planned. I, I just sort of am, am going in. I'm, I'm, I'm just vibing here. But, like, you see how by, by just, like, I didn't plan any of this. I just started feeling it out. And, and now we've got some interesting shapes to work with. And, like, you know, you can do this. And if you don't like anything you, you put down, you scrap it, and that's fine. But if you like it, if you if you find something interesting there, you can just sort of you can just sort of sort of play in the space, you know? And I, I think remembering to be playful, to be experimental, and to be open is like a really good headspace to get in when you're either doing art for output or input they come back to the classic jacob draw class way of thinking about practicing as as input and i i found that very helpful personally i did too so so thank you for that hey you're, you're welcome i'm just happy to happy to help because it helped me also to like organize my thoughts that way yeah. yeah we're not just teaching you how to draw we're teaching you how to think think better <laughs> think better why are you thinking so bad uh something you said nathan that i think is important to remember too mm -hmm. um is this idea of like when you're drawing something or making any kind of art you're not just like creating something you're also like like finding it yeah like this way Nathan is doing where he's just drawing stuff and then like using that to then springboard into other ideas and other thoughts. You're like finding it as you create it. I think a lot of times people go in with this mindset of like, I have this in my mind and I want to make this exactly this thing that I've thought of. Right. And then when it's not that exactly, they get discouraged. Yeah. Um, which is understandable. But if you go in with a mindset of like, I want to make this kind of thing. And so I'm just going to start exploring my options here. Yeah. And I'm going to like find it as I go, like find what the, the path is that I'm eventually going to take. But I don't, you don't have to know what that path is ahead of time. Yeah. I like never do. I just like start with an idea and then I like see what comes out of my hand. Right. And then I'm like, oh, it's that kind of day. I got to do <laughs> exactly. this kind of thing today because it's this kind of day. Yeah. You have to meet yourself where you're at. You know, and that, and again, like doing some warm ups, doing some like very low pressure warm ups is a good way of checking in with yourself and being like, okay, this is, this is the level I'm, I'm going to be able to operate at today. And that, and you know, you can set your own expectations and you can find, and you can find, find what's going on in there. Cause again, there's like, there's a lot of stuff happening in your brain that you're not consciously aware of that like your 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 verbal brain that's like doing all of like the the inner monologue stuff if you have an inner monologue i mean you know some people don't but i i certainly do like it's only thinking about the stuff that's making it into that part of the brain and then when you sit down to draw you're activating this other part of your brain that is is thinking the entire time even if it's not telling you that and so you can surprise yourself. Yeah, totally. And I think it's it's always good to be welcoming of those surprises um, and be open to that. This was a thing that Northern Lion was talking about. Like yeah. some, sometimes he's like weirdly profound in strange ways. Yeah, love that um, about him. But he was talking about how it's it's crazy how like your brain can know that you know something even if you don't have the answer at that moment, mm -hmm. there's like a part of your brain that can be like, oh, I know the answer to this, but you're going to have to give the other parts of the brain a minute to like locate yeah. where that file is indexed. So like the exactly. capacity for the brain to have an awareness of being like, I know the answer to this. I just don't know it right now, but give me like six seconds. And I'm like sending signals to these other parts to like go and actually locate the info. 
kind of like a library system or something. Yeah. That's kind of like how it is with, with art too. There's like these parts of your brain that, that aren't being like accessed by your conscious thought, but you can still like get to them and, and come up with things that, uh, that you didn't think you, you had in you. Yeah. Now that we're warmed up with that, let's just do a little bit of, of like dexterity control practice, draw some shapes. Cause that, you know, now that we're, now that we've got the brain loose, we, we are, we're, we are still practicing a craft. And so we want to get that muscle memory good. So let's, again, we'll start off with some very low pressure, just like draw some circles. Remember how to draw circles. Curves are an important part. They don't have to be, be circles. They can be like sort of blob blobbies. But again, just like practice drawing curves, practice drawing straight lines. If you can practice. draw curves and straight lines, you can pretty much draw everything right. that exists. Congrats, so you're is, done. This is the next the next stage of the of the warm up to practice. Which again, you know, if you don't have time to do all of this, you you don't need to. But we got we got two hours to kill here on stream, so let's you know let's just do it. Let's just do it all, and and whatever whatever of this you find valuable, you can you can take with you into your own practicing, your own practice practice practice. But yeah, just you know, we're we're thinking about. We're, we're doing a lot here. We're, we're, we're practicing the curves and the straight lines. We're also thinking about space, the way objects interact with each other and overlap in space. Because again, drawing is, is lying. You're, you're, you're tricking yourself and anyone looking at what you're drawing into believing that these two-dimensional lines uh, on a flat surface are actually representations of three-dimensional objects in space. And the way you do that is with trickery. Yeah, something I like to do is I'll like draw like a frog or something. Mm -hmm. And then I'll show it to someone and I'll be like, hey, what's this? And they'll be like, that's a frog. And I'm like, no, you idiot. It's lines. It's lines. That's not a frog. Draw a frog right now. I tricked you again. You've been tricked, and it's that's a really good way to like make and keep your friends. <laughs> you can make a friend that way. You can do that to a stranger, or you can do that to someone you already you already know. It's gonna it's gonna go great for you, regardless of what you choose to do yeah. with it. Like, see, when Nate, what Nathan's drawing now, I don't even know what it is. To me, it's just lines. It's, it's just lines, girl. It's just lines. So I can't, you know, I don't even see representational art. I only see lines. Yeah. I love going to see the sea lions at the zoo. Sea lions. Sea lions. Sometimes there's a line to see the sea lions. Jacob Magritte Andrews. Yeah, that's right. Many people say that I'm like the next Magritte. Magritte. Tips hat. Tips hat. Did we make that joke already? When it's I did the Magritte? Entirely possible that we did. Magritte Luffy. We probably did, right? There's no way we, we did didn't Magritte didn't say Luffy, that. but then we also did we also talk about Magritte on the um drawing surrealist art from description that was a fun video that was fun should do that again i agree um yeah just like just just some shapes just some <laughs> shapes in space i love that the addition of the frog makes it seem like this is all a product of the frog's mind or it's like you licked this frog and this is what you're seeing now yeah <laughs> little triangle in there little pyramid al watts said i that was one i showed my mom the surrealist art one i hope your mom enjoyed it i hope your mom enjoyed it as well 
I hope that we're the kind of channel that if someone's watching us and then shows their mom, their mom's like, I'm glad that they're watching that <laughs> and not like this is, this is a negative impact on my, this is filth <laughs> on my child. Yeah. I guess it depends on the video. She laughed very hard. Yes. All right. Heck yeah. That's a cool mom. That's a cool mom. Shout out to your mom. My cat will not stop going crazy in my lap. I'm trying to do a class here. Some, some straight, straight parallel lines and parallel curves is another good thing to practice. Consistency. Make everything vibrate. Make everything look like it's vibrating. Your mom supports us on Patreon? Whoa! Oh my god. Thank you. I guess there's probably lots of moms that support us on Patreon. We should do a poll. We don't talk to find about out this how enough. many moms support us on Patreon. Patri mom. Patri mom. Patri mom. I like draw class streams. They're like, they're so intimate. You know, it's just us and like five people in chat, 12 people. Wow. Got a, we got a packed, a packed class today. Yeah. 12, 12 viewers, 12 viewers, but so, they might not all be chatting. That's fair. Yeah, I bet there's at least one of these 12 who has said nothing and they don't intend to say anything. You don't have to say anything, but also if like very open to um, requests and, and suggestions and, and questions today. So if you if you have anything you want to work on or you want to just like have us talk about or you know get get confused by, feel free to to bring it up at any point. And um, chat's not moving particularly fast. So even if we don't get to it right away. Just whenever you think of it, feel we'll free to, plenty to, of time to read it. To drop it in there and hopefully we'll we'll be able to at least at least talk about it. Even if we don't necessarily do a great job answering your question. But we'll try. Negapol said, I'm at work with a period. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so so are we. <laughs> Which I love because it gives me the vibe of like can can y'all like keep it down? I'm at work right now. <laughs> I'm at work. I'm trying to get some work done. That's very, that's very just like true to Drawfee. We're always, Drawfee's origins is in just sort of being annoying while other people are trying to work. Yeah. <clears throat> Al Watts said, I love to do a full hands feet practice. Ooh, okay. That's always good. Always good to brush up on. We could, we could do a little, we could do a little of that. Look up a picture of a hand. We all have them. Let's see. Check this out. Whoa. Check this out. Whoa. Check this out. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you ever seen there's anything There's literally... Like that? There's literally a section online of action for just hands and feet. So let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at some at some. Ooh, that's a good hands. That's a good hands. Let's get that. Moon Raccoon is on their lunch break right now, so we can interrupt them. Are you are you using the snipping tool right now? I'm snipping. Your screen went dim in a way that suggested a snipping tool was being employed. I was, I was snipping. Ooh, there's some feet. He's snipping again. <laughs> it's funny because your whole face goes dark when you use it because the screen <laughs> gets darker. It's very sinister. <laughs> Here's the thing about feet. They're actually easy. Yeah. They're just triangles. They're just triangles. 
I guess they're more like maybe wedges. They're sort of like wedges. All right, well, let's just, you know, let's just load these guys in. Um, just get them. Get them. Just get them in there. Spider-Man. Spider-Hand. Jumpy feet. Jumpy feet. Reep. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? They're gone. <laughs> they're gone. Try again. Yeah, there's there's a hand. Worked. Jumpy Again. feet. Hey, there they are. Ooh, little chopstick break. Little chopstick break. Oh. What in the world was that? Raccoons. <laughs> Where did they come from? I, I screenshotted them for something else. I guess I just opened my most recent screenshots and they were in <laughs> they were in there. <laughs> I was just looking for like a nighttime color palette. Oh right. But, uh ended up going with something different because I didn't like how brown it looked. Okay. So let's let's start with this hand right here, because this is a nice sort of illustration and we can we can uh let's blow it up a little i was gonna say that's just like a hand in a normal position but that's not really a normal position i guess no, but it is a good way to understand how a hand works you can see them bones going all the way through you can see the bones so let's do a little red lining because because the way that i the like my shorthand uh -huh. For uh, for hand is you're you're basically you're sort of drawing you're drawing like sort of a like a pentagon basically and then you have sort of like I knew the government is, was involved in this somehow yeah sort of like a house it goes all the way like, to the top so oh, like if it's just a house then maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. Sort of, sort of like this. Sort of like a lopsided pentagon, and then you get your, your fingies. This person's got like very webbed. I don't know if. Yeah, I guess we all kind of have that. And then yeah, the we all got the web of, to varying you know, degrees. Comes out over here. So yeah, you can. You can even have it sort of extend more that but yeah like this is this is sort of like your your basic basically how how hand how hand work you got it comes off the wrist and then you you sort of have this like this sort of pentagon shape the thumb comes off this part the fingers are on this part the wrist is over here and then each finger has the joint here and then two more boop 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 and the thumb just has the one joint and then a boop and so that that's sort of like your your basic your basic hand and from there what you have to remember is this this zone has so many bones in it and so it yeah. can bend and twist like it's not it's not solid this this whole thing it's very like it can squish together it it like it's very malleable and movable and so you can you can end up with all sorts of of, of wacky positions um it's sort of here's sort of a good example um sort of over here like when you do when you do spider-man you can sort of see sort of the way the hand can bend because you have um and again i don't i don't know the actual like anatomical names for this but you have sort of this like this little like butt in the middle of your hand yeah the middle butt the middle butt where it's like your thumb comes in and has like this 
this sort of cheek over here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then like that goes sort of halfway through your hand and then you've got this other cheek that sort of comes on in and usually usually sort of goes into the pinky and that's that's sort of the bounding and then you have this crease here I don't know. I don't know which of these is your like when you do like palm reading, but like you have this like crease here as well where the where the whole it's sort of like when you make a fist, like your knuckles are up here, and then when you do that, this part bends in as yeah. well. Let's your hand sort of fold in half. Yeah. So you can grip things. So again, and you can see where the joints are. You can you can break it down. There's one, two. And then, yeah, it's one, two, and then the knuckles sort of form the back part. And if you were to draw the, the line of where the knuckles are, it would sort of go, go like this. And that's where the fingers are coming out of. And so, like, it, it, it's sort of, it's twofold, right? Like, it's understanding the structure in sort of an abstract sense, but then also just like practicing life drawing and just drawing. So like, you know, redlining is good for understanding the structure, but then like actually practicing looking at a hand in a position and just sort of noticing all like the subtle ways, the subtle shapes that that are formed doing these sort of gesture or contour drawings from life is a good way to sort of understand what what you're looking for I'm just sort of doing it doing it sort of loose and then like noticing like okay, where everything that sort lines of, up where everything lines up and, and even this like i didn't do a great job <laughs> like if i like you could spend a lot of time just like drawing and redrawing from like because you know like you have these expectations of what of what it's supposed to be but it's it's oftentimes different so you gotta really sort of sort of practice looking And I think drawing hands is a really good exercise because you you look at hands so much in your day to day, you will notice if it looks wrong. Yeah. And so it's, it's one a of the really things good people see for sure. It's a really good way to sort of get used to that feeling. Because, like, you know, if you draw something that you you don't have a lot of experience looking at, you might be like, ah, oh, close enough. But with a hand, it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Not close enough. Not close enough. Get closer. And that and that's a good that sh that should spur you to further to further practice. Jay Scotty said this exercise will no doubt come in handy. Thank you, so Jay I, Scotty. I did go ahead and ban them. Okay. Well, we appreciate we appreciated you. <laughs> you. You know, you just took it too far. You took one step too far. That's the danger. It, it got out of hand. It got out of hand. <laughs> I'm gonna kick Nathan from the call. <laughs> just hangs <laughs> up. Like, all right. Well, <laughs> another good. Another successful draw class. <laughs> yeah. So you see, again, you spend a little more time. Just this guy said, I underhand. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah. So that that's sort of like the, the, the twofold method of like hands, but, but any body part really is just like, look at the structure get sort of a basic sense you know a short hand for uh for like like a working understanding of 
of like mechanically what's going on and then just practice looking at it in all of its different positions and 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 that that's just something that's going to come from practicing and observing and and being able to observe from like an artistic perspective from like a trying to trying to see and then represent is like that that is a, a discipline and a skill uh in and of itself like i can already see like this negative space here was different than what i drew like it, it really it like has this big lump and then it comes down and so you could spend a lot of time just like on a single a single reference image really sort of getting getting into it and um and that's just gonna improve your ability to pose your characters and draw from imagination uh when you when you want to as well yeah it all kind of slowly congeals into your brain the more you do it yeah and then uh, it just then becomes second nature and then for feet feet are a little less complicated than hands not quite as many bones but can get a decent sense of them here we can we can do the exact same thing we start with like a little red lining just get an idea we say it all the time but highly recommend the red lining process let's just look at the it's just it's just a triangle yeah straight up a triangle it's a triangle and it's got like it's got sort of like extra bits. So it's like this, the heel and the ball. Yeah, the ball. Of the foot. Ball. And you've got, and it sort of hinges on the ankle here. And so you, you sort of have this like fucked up spaceship, and then you, your toes are sort of doing their own thing. And so, you know, you can extrapolate that to different angles but yeah you just start you start with this triangle with sort of like a long a long bit and then a shorter bit you figure out where the ankle is sort of right here and then you do heel ball toes yeah that's pretty much it pretty much it and then again you know it's 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 three-dimensional so here you have again you have the triangle but now you also have this this plane here as well and this makes your and little so, wedgie and it makes it a little wedgie exactly and then this bit sort of wraps around here's the ankle here's the ball you can sort of see it down here and then again the toes And yeah, it, they're not, feet aren't quite as flexible, but like they do like understanding sort of where the hinges are. So like, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing a steppy, you have this part of the triangle and then the heel can be up, the ankle can be here. And then this, the, this part of the triangle can do more of like a, more of like a bend. So you, you again it's not it's not super rigid this heel shouldn't be quite as big but yeah like you know that's sort of how you you can rest on the ball of your foot you and go up on your on your tippy toes as well yeah like you're saying nathan it's super helpful to use the parts that are not flexible as like your like points of reference right and then like know which parts like you just said are like movable so then you know like oh i can shift the heel which doesn't really change shape mm -hmm. if i shift that up then this part in the middle is the part that will be flexible yeah and then the ball is kind of going to be the same just like a rotated shape that is not so flexible I'm gonna try so you, and can, find... you can use those points as like guideposts i'm gonna try and 
find a pick. Oh, here's a that's a good foot. I'm gonna find a couple more feet picks. Hope that's okay with everyone. Well, that's fine with me. Okay. The people they want to learn. They want to learn, and I find I find it's uh it's helpful for me too. Like a foot coming at me, like a straight on. Is the here we go? Perfect. Ask and you shall receive. He's snipping. I'm snipping. I'm snipping. Give me that. Two more feet. Hopefully the raccoons don't show up again. <laughs> Those pesky little guys. <laughs> I don't know why it was <laughs> something about the images just flashing on screen was funny. <laughs> It's like foot, Spider-Man hand. Yeah. Upwards foot. That's art. That's just art stuff. We're just doing art stuff. Look at this. This looks like a, a professional artist is practicing. That you that's you. But it was me. You're was the just you me are a professional Nathan. artist. What? And you are practicing. Yeah. Like a freaking artist's sketchbook over here. Yeah. That's what it is be this could be the thumbnail image who knows always have to go back through and remember what we even did in a draw class when i make the thumbnail there's never any telling so here we go here's here's a because like oftentimes when you're drawing your 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 characters they're gonna they're gonna be sort of facing towards you, and so you have the foot coming at you instead. And so, you know, we were talking about the foot in profile is a triangle, but coming towards us, guess what? It's what? Still a triangle. Whoa! But it's like a different triangle. But it's a different triangle because you're seeing it at a different angle. So again, you have the ankle, and then you've got. The heel triangle sort of back here and then we've got the ball of the foot over here and the toes but it sort of forms this this sort of triangle type shape as it comes towards us and this is because typically not always typically if you're if you're looking straight on at like a person If, if you're around the same height as that person, you're sort of going to, your eye line's going to be here. And as you look down at the, at the, their lower bit, you're going to actually, you're seeing them not straight on down here. You're looking down at them. So you're seeing the top and they're coming towards you, but at a, at an angle, at a downwards angle. And so that, that angle creates this this sort of triangle shape yeah so unless they're like way. really far away yeah or if you're like on the floor looking up at them <laughs> if you're laying on the ground and, and then everything then you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a little different but typically for like you know for your 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 oc drawn your ocs just sort of standing there this is this is sort of the the sort of coming down and towards us in space is how the feet are gonna look. You always want to make the the legs longer than you think they need to be. Yeah, I'm I'm a classic short leg. Yeah, doer. Um, and again, you know, this is just like th this is shorthand. This is like little little tips and, and tricks but but the best way to to get comfortable drawing any sort of anatomy is life drawing because the the more you understand how these things behave in reality the the better able you will be to abstract them when you're drawing your your cartoons um yeah for sure and yeah you know like we 
we we could spend the entire class just doing life drawing contour drawings of of feet and hands but uh this is this is a a grab bag sort of a uh, draw class um noses at different angles well that kind of touches on what uh what you already had planned because you were you were going to do some some face some face stuff right jacob yeah i, I am going to do some heads at different angles and believe it or not if you got the head at different angles you got the nose at different you got angles the nose too. at different angles do you want do you want to want me to pass it over to you sure okay i will hop go. in jacob's turn time to make my first markings of the day My first markings on page. I'm going to make this cat leave my lap. Please go. Thank you. Oh yeah, thank you Zoom. That's a good place for that to be. <laughs> just really float it Zoom's down. You're a little rascal. <laughs> it's just where I wanted it. All right, let me remember for a moment how to draw i'm gonna do i'm gonna do one, one of nathan's little things here let's just make some yeah do some do some warm-up and you can you can do warm-up warm-up doesn't have to be just at the start if you're like an hour into a practice sesh and you want to keep going but you're feeling a little a little tunnel vision you can always take a step back and just do some scribbles to to loosen to loosen it up again if you're feeling tight if you're feeling frustrated you can always just go back to like just doodling you want to be feeling tight but not tight mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying <laughs> i do when i'm drawing i want to be like that's tight what a tight <laughs> drawing i just did what a tight drawing i just did hell yeah <laughs> damn it's so tight and for some reason when i'm warming up i always draw like a like a face yeah i love the your warm-up dumpling faces i always do one one little cartoony face it just like helps me get in the get in the mindset of like where did things go yeah you do a face i usually draw like some sort of horrible critter like a gross dog because usually i'm up first drawing uh episode and so I'm doing my little warm-up doodles, and you're like, get that out of here. We have to record. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you're not wrong. Let's just get a little bit of hair. This is yeah. this is Goku, obviously. This is obviously Goku being like, What's what is sex? <laughs> I've never that heard feeling, of it personally. That feeling when you mention sex to Goku. <laughs> and he's like, I don't I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Is that like a type of punching? I don't know what that is. Because I know about punching. I know about punching. I know about shooting beams of energy. Is it like that? Is it like that? It's got on. I know about level. going really fast. So fast that it's like I'm teleporting. Is it like that? Okay, enough of that. Um, so I had prepared here some some up angle and down angle heads because I noticed something that I've struggled with recently is is depicting the head at some different angles. I lose my roadmap as soon as it gets too angled. So we're going to do a little bit of that. Here's one. Ooh. Look at that. And this will help us. The goal here is to get like some, some positioning. Like I don't want really need to get all the details of this person's head because I'm not doing mm -hmm. a portrait. Right. I just want to know like where things are positioned, generally speaking, so that I can like remember them in my brain. So we're going to do some red lining, of course. And we're going to learn a thing or two about it. First things first I would do is get sort of our cranial circle going here. Oh yeah. And then from there, I'm always all about getting the jaw on. 
Yep, get them, them skull shapes. Skull shapes, and then the ear position I find to be very important. Like the ear position helps clue you in as to where everything else is going to be. Mm -hmm. If ear is lower than eye, head is looked up. If ear is higher than eye, head is look, looking down. Wow. Uh, and then we can draw like our little brow line here that curves around to the top of the ear. Then we can get sort of this, this fella in there as well, if we so choose. Um, so things that I want to focus on here are things like, where do the eyeballs sit when you got a head at this angle? I do think it's important that we get in the nose. And so I'm just going to like outline the nose, the basic nose shape, and kind of like the same way Nathan did feet. Um, the nose is sort of like a foot. <laughs> yeah. It's in many ways. Baby. It's like a wedge, a wedgy. It's a wedgy. Wish I'd stop saying wedgy. It's no. like a wedgy triangle. Yeah. And then like the different parts of it look different depending on the shape of your nose. It's a freaking doorstop on your face. Yeah, it's a doorstop for your face. And then the mouth is kind of like a, um, like a trapezoid. Yeah. Trapezoidal sort of shape. And then these eyes that are looking up. I want to like, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on them. Because I feel like I always lose in my mind, like the memory of what shape the eye is supposed to be at different angles. Mm -hmm. I always like push it too far, I think. Well, you can always just sort of go back to the fact that it is, they are spheres yes. that are, you're, you're only showing a little bit of. But there's like a favored side, depending on the angle of the head. Right. There's like a curvy side and a... Yeah. Like if you're looking this way, then this side of the eye is going to be a steeper angle. Right. And this side is going to be a shallower angle. Yeah. And then because they're looking up, the bottom lid is a little flatter than it would be if they were looking dead on. Yeah. And because this eye is on the far side of the head, it's even like sort of more extreme, the angle. Yep. And the whole eye is, is flattened horizontally because it's turned away from us. You know, the most extreme example is like a face in profile. The eye is basically just a triangle. Yes. With like a curved, or not even necessarily curved, but yeah. Then we got some brows here. And you can also like look at sort of the hairline is a good thing to like take note of mm -hmm. and how that sits on the head. Another nice thing to look at is the, where the neck, um, is. Look at where and, the neck is. And like where it connects more specifically. Cause I think a lot of people, they get like in their minds, like if you have like a head that's like this. They're like, the neck is here. It just goes like straight down out of the head. Mm -mm. And it, it doesn't do that. It comes like from behind the ear because it meets up with the base of the skull back here. Right. Your spine goes right into the base of your skull. And then it will come down the other way, sort of underneath the, the jaw, obviously, where it connects up into like your, your jaw muscles. Yeah. It's like, I always draw... I draw legs too short and I draw necks too thin. Like even a thin necked person, the neck is still pretty thick. Yeah. There's a lot going on in there. A lot of, you got bones in there. You got tubes in there. You got muscles. And it's we can whole, consider as well. A bunch of stuff in there. This line, which like sort of um, show, it's like this. I wish I knew the names of all the muscles, but I don't. There's like a muscle on the side of your neck that comes down and wraps around. And then that separates here into like your uh, shoulder. What is that? Like trape trapezoid? Trapezius. Trapezoid. Trapezius. The muscle on your shoulder right there. 
Yeah, your traps. Your neck shoulder connector. Ah. Your trap, yeah. Is it trapezoid or trapezius? Trapezius. Trapezius. Trapezoid is a shape, you're right. You just talked about it for lips. But things can be named the same thing. That's Two true. Things. And it's important to remember this bit too. This the like under. under the jaw connector. Yeah. Jowl sort of thing. Yeah. Well, little, little artist hack that unless the light source is coming from below, that's like basically always going to be in shadow. Yeah, very true. It's a good area of what we call in the art world ambient occlusion. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm which is like a spot that's going to be in shadow regardless of the in like a neutral lighting condition that spot will typically be in shadow kind of like behind the ear is another spot yeah that is ambiently occluded usually the underside of the nose would be as well but this person is looking up so exposing that area to light um okay we're gonna do a quick out to the side here just sort of a general try to do like a recap of this type of thing yeah you do your red lining and then you try and do it do it freehand so we're gonna get like an ear we're gonna get this general thing and i think the ear needs to be even lower i tend to put the ear too high that's okay. So we can connect that around. And then we want to have the nose. And I'm not going for like a likeness or anything. It's just to reinforce in my mind these positions. The structure. The structure. And the lips are like a weighted trapezoid and not a trapezius. <laughs> And then we've got these like weighted curves that are the eyes. Yeah. And then one will be there and one will be like here. That's like a little bit more, a little bit more gradual. And then this part is a little flatter because of the angle we're looking at. Then we got some brows. Try to get a little hairline action in there, too. Like a precocious child. <laughs> and so Mother, see, I threw up. Yeah. Now I'm, like, I, looking at, like, what is, you know, jumping out to me as being wrong now that I've, like, yeah. got it down. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the cheek over here should be starting a little higher. Yeah. As it comes down. Cause it starts like right below your eye. I tend to put it in the wrong place oftentimes. And that, that little bit already helped quite a, quite a lot actually. Yeah. Yeah. This is looking pretty good. And then this is, you know, we're not going for perfection here. You just want to get it like, just so you kind of remember like ear down here and then this angles up. And yeah. then the eyes look sort of like this, not exactly, but it's to help you with your shorthand later. Yeah. And then we can, of course, do a comparison check, which I often like to do. Oh yeah. And just like see where where have I like tended to make mistakes here? Basically, you just made the lips a little make this a little, a little down, a little more down. Yep, I got the lips in the wrong spot. The eyes are are decent. Yeah, you just I always little... make them bigger, but that's sort of like yeah, that's that's just cartoon cartoonifying. Yeah. This is really good, Jacob. Oh, thank you. My nose angle was a little off. I turned it. And it's like, this is where you can recognize your tendencies, right? Like I wanted to yeah. just turn the nose more forwards than it should be. It should be more angled this way. 
Um, and then, yeah, the lips, I moved way too far down and again, more towards the center. And like, this is the problem with drawing heads at, uh, extreme angles is that your brain is going to want to like force everything back to center. Yeah. Um, and you can't let it do that. Right. And again, it's helpful. Those guidelines are helpful because you, you can remember that like that line going down the center of the face that you drew, like if it, if you just kept it going more. Yeah. yeah. It was like a little yeah. too, again, centered. Yeah. A little too. Needed to be yeah. a little more extreme with that. But that's like how you learn where your, what your tendencies are. So you can look out for them. Yeah. I did like a whole set of practicing once speaking. We talked about like short legs earlier. I tried to like rectify that by doing this. I would like draw a pose next to the reference, move it over, see that the legs were short, lengthen the legs, get another pose, do it again. Yeah. And I kept like making the legs longer than I thought they should be until they were eventually like right. Yeah. And then like reinforcing that behavior. Uh, let's do another head. Let's do another head. We got a good Ooh. extreme angle here. Very sharp features as well. Yeah. And cool lighting. So this is tilted up even more and and three quarters to even more. So we'll try to find like a circle, a cranial circle here. Yeah. Something like that. We're going to put in the ear, make this a little bit darker or lighter. You understand. And so we got the cheek coming out way down here on this one and the jaw actually like concaves we're like so we're so tilted so you can see more of this this shape right here this like connector shape which as i said before is important to remember so don't forget it okay don't forget it. hey come on hey pay attention all right, so this sort of dividing line is going to be really extreme. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, it almost tangents with the with, with the, the cheek. cheek. I guess yeah. it, it would if if the uh, the nose wasn't in the way. Yeah, it probably would. Um then we have we'll get the nose shape in here. Again, it's like a 3D triangle wedge situation. This one's a little pointier. A little bit pointier. This is a good way, you know, like people were asking about nose shapes. This is a good way to like start seeing the differences in them by like shaping them out like this. And then we got some interesting uh, lips here at this angle too. We got a very sort of steep shape going up this way with the top lip. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom lip is like almost flat underneath at this angle. And this eyeball is very squinted compared to the other eyeball. We go back and look at this guy. Eyes open a little bit wider. And so it kind of gives a different set of shape values here. Yeah, it's like what they're looking at. Like this person's got their head tilted up, but and it's they're like looking, looking down. down. Yeah. Whereas the other person was head tilted up and looking up. And so we can see that like when looking up it brings that lower lid up higher and when looking down the lower lid is actually lower it's got more of a a dip mm -hmm. to it even despite the fact that the head is tilted so far back those orbs those orbs be moving and like the lids just kind of move along with wherever you're adjusting your orb yeah Get some brows in there. And this other eye is like completely obscured. So we don't need to worry about that. I'll just get some ear, ear shapes. Let 
yeah, there's like so much that you like try to internalize with stuff like this. Cause it's like, if I set out to draw ahead at this angle from memory, there's like no way I would arrive here at this point. No, like I, I wouldn't know how to push it far enough. Nose shapes a little bit wrong. But just think you, you practice doing this every day for like a week. And then maybe the next time you get a drawing prompt to like draw a person, you're like, I want to try drawing them with their head at this angle. Yeah. Because it's fresh. It's, it's fresh, fresh in, in my mind. mind. Jinx. It's like, that's what I always try and tap, tap into is like, I mean, you know, the reason why I love drawing dinosaurs or I, f I feel competent drawing dinosaurs is because just like as a kid, I was like, I want to draw dinosaurs so i would just draw di you know you just look at dinosaurs and draw dinosaurs or you look at goku and you draw goku as i did and it gets in there it becomes it becomes muscle memory you're no longer having to just like think you know reconstruct goku you have it in there you know the shapes and the same can be done for for anything you, if you put in the effort and the time yeah this is like this is a tough one but I'm going to try my best here I believe in you well it's important I think to illustrate the that it's not easy yeah it's not going to be perfect right away but it's it's still worth doing but I'm going to I'm going to learn something in the process here Okay, we're going to bring the cheek up. We're going to cheek up a bit. But also we're going to cheek in. Yeah. And again, like we're doing this in front of you and then putting it on the internet for anyone to see. When you're practicing, you don't have to show anybody. No, it can just be for you. You can throw it all in the trash when you're done. You don't need to tell nobody. It's just input. It's the fact that you did it that's important, not what you drew. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Then the eye. Gonna this, have is, one. this is already looking so good, I gotta say. Hey, thank you. Even if it's not exactly this pose, it's still like a good upward face pose it's still better than i could do before yeah so what's the placement of this eye it is really a sort of out there in no man's land yeah so we're just gonna try our best with that much like we do with everything here on this program and then sort of like this this ain't bad no. Nostril. I'm always I'm always very impressed watching watching you or uh or Karina or Julia do these these life drawing demos. Sometimes it comes out good and sometimes you really feel like you have never been able to draw <laughs> yeah. in your life. It's very vulnerable to do, but I, I think it's nice. I think people appreciate it. Yeah, I, I can tell right now that it's not already not tilted enough. Right, and that's okay. But we're going to do like the, the Passover anyways here. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see exactly. And we can all see. It's a, very, it's a very extreme... Yeah, you just sort of... You drew the next frame in the animation as he turns. Yeah, it's like if I try to like line up any one part, everything else is a little bit wrong. Yeah. Let's see how close we can get it. We'll line up like the nose here. Yeah. And we'll take a look. Yeah, ear too high, which means the head is not tilted enough. I got the cheek weirdly is higher. But the chin comes in too far because again, my brain wanted to correct for... Yeah. They wanted to make things more neutral. Got to fight your brain. Got to fight your brain. Yeah, a lot, a lot of 
a lot of drawing practice is like learning and the, and unlearning at the same time because your brain is is trying to this is more this way trying to tell you what stuff looks like yeah it's like if, oh i know what a head looks like yeah i know what a head I've looks seen like plenty it of looks those. like this and it's yeah a lot of a lot of i mean and then that's why life drawing is so important you know, at, at any stage of being an artist, because you're constantly learning these ways of abstracting things, but it's always good to go back to just like remembering to practice, just, just drawing what you see and getting your, your brain to, to not interfere with that. Yeah, totally. Cause you'll see, you'll see something new. You'll, you'll look at something from an angle you haven't drawn it before so now my what i'm what i'm gonna do here just for a second is be like okay well then what if i wanted to like sort of interpret this mm -hmm. in like a more cartoony fashion Ooh, yeah like if i wanted to work this like into something i would actually draw because i'm not gonna draw this if i'm sitting down to like make a piece mm -hmm. this ain't my style no so it's like, okay, well then how can I like, we'll use like a bigger nose and we can do like cartoony or this looks like Steven universe. And you know, you don't do as many lips when you do depending you on are, the cartoon, but you are drawing super nut. <laughs> oh, <laughs> It's not. It's yeah. not. It's different. The most, the most extreme up, upturned face is super nut. <laughs> now, this is more of a, a smug smirk. Yeah. So then, if that's there, you know, we could get something like this. And so this is like a a pretty reasonable approximation of the type of thing. And we'll just go ahead and make it look like make it look make it Steven Universe. <laughs> it's kind of like a cartoon Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> What's he Jerry. looking at? I don't know. Jerry Universe. He's going. Ah, Newman. So yeah, these are like ways you can try to incorporate this sort of thing and in, yeah, into your own work. Try to like stylize it. I just I just popped in, take a look at the uh, draw class chat uh, Discord channel. I see people drawing along with these up angles. Yeah, <laughs> raise your nose to the heavens. Yeah. As as always, I, I think I, I say it on every draw class, but I it always makes me really happy to see people sharing whatever they're comfortable sharing. Um because I get like I said, you don't you don't have to share your practice with nobody. But if you're if you're willing to, uh it's it's really nice. And I, I like I like the community, I like how supportive y'all are of each other and how willing you are to uh to share your your progress on on your various art journeys it is super nice uh why don't we take a look at some noses let's take a look at some noses Since that was like specifically requested yeah let's see we're gonna go for some some noses in a profile Ha, ha, ha. 
standard scale. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start here because this guy's got a nose that lends itself well to being an easy shape. That's a beautiful triangle nose. As like a baseline. Yeah, there's like noses tend to fall into like sort of shape categories. And just like a cool looking dude. And this cool looking dude cool has a very triangular nose. Beautiful eyelashes. So this is sort of the shape you're going to be looking at here. Yeah. It's like a triangle. Like a pizza slice. That goes on your face. Um, and then breaking it down further, you got sort of this, this bit that is like the bone that is separated by this bit. That's like the, the cartilage or whatever, like on the sides that makes a different plane. Mm -hmm. And then you got the nostril bit. So this is a this is an easy nose to make. And then something you can do that I often do is just try out like variations. You know, you can make this happen. And then once you can kind of make this happen, you can be like, "All right, well what if it like what if it does more like this? What if this part is like curve, curved in? Oh yeah. And it's like you're still gonna have your nostrils doing similar types of things. It's like, okay, what if this part curves out? It's still gonna, it's always gonna be a triangle of various shapes and it's always gonna curve upwards here where it like connects with your brow mm -hmm. and it's going to curve here where it connects with your upper lip. And so if you get yeah. those two things, the rest you can kind of just go crazy on. Try out a bunch of different shapes like this. This is for noses in profile. Right. Specifically, but let's get a different nose pick to look at. And also you're drawing like you're you're fully articulating like the the complete structure of the nose when you're like this would be for like an underdrawing or like yes, you know yeah. for for anatomical understanding but like when you go to actually like make a piece you don't necessarily have to draw all of these lines you you and, will not be doing that and uh yeah like, in all likelihood because it, yeah. they don't they're not like visible right uh, it would be too much detail. It's up to you as the artist how much detail you you want to um, articulate with lines versus implying through shading or just leaving blank. And that and that's that comes down to like style preference. Because so that's... here's another nose. This one is still a triangle. You can still mm -hmm. make it like sort of fit in a triangle shape, but this mm -hmm. is a much more rounded triangle. The bridge is convex and the the bulb of the nose is more rounded yeah and again it's going to connect here to the lip it's going to connect up here to the brow and even the uh the nostril is is rounder on this one as well so you can experiment with doing like sharp lines round lines make it more like bulb out make it like sink in there's lots of different ways to do it and it's not it's not very hard and the nose also gives you like so much information on the face because like once you got a nose down you know that the mouth is going to be here you know that the eye is going to like meet um sort of where the nose meets the the brow ridge that's like where the eye is going to end up. So you can use this as like a roadmap very easily. Yeah. And then you're going to have a brow up here. Love a nose. I mean, Julia always does a nose out approach when she's drawing a face. Very helpful stuff. Yeah. The nose is, is the, the compass of the face. It is. It really, it really shows you the direction you're facing. 
It's the first part you notice. You nose to You nose nose to sit. Nose to Oh, I got another good nose here. Oh yeah, great. This kind of illustrates uh, the other sort of shape I was trying to show. Majestic. I actually kind of drew it. It's very similar to this one. Yeah. Um, where the it's got like a. I wish I had like words that functioned. That's okay. Just look at it. You're you, you're using again. We're like, that's the hardest thing. Is is like we're we're living in this the nonverbal part of the brain when we're drawing, right? <laughs> and then you're trying to describe it with words what yeah. you're doing. That's hard. And this one, the bridge of the nose is more prominent. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. You got a bit of a smaller nostril, very prominent bridge. So it comes out and then goes down at a steeper angle. Noses are cool. I feel like they're one Noses of like cool. those features that people are always like, oh, you know, I look at people's eyes and, or like I look at people's lips. I'm like, you got to look at the nose. It's like one of those unique facial features that really makes your face look like itself. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, let's That's get cool. like a front nose. I, th I think I've, I've said this before and got roasted for it, but you know the freaking ghosts in Halo? That they look like a nose? They look like a nose. I don't think you got roasted for it. I think we, we like showcased it. Okay. Didn't we like put a ghost in and like... I mean, you're not wrong. You're right, is what yeah. I'm saying. I think I got a little... Maybe not roasted, razzed. You got, got ripped got, and I, roasted. I got a little, I got a little, a, a light ribbing. Torn apart. But I do think, you know, it's a good, if you spent a lot of time in college in the, uh, in, in the, the late aughts, early 2010s, it's a, it's a shape that's readily recognizable. The ghost. The halo ghost. So here's one of your beautiful nose triangles. And then if you want to, for scientific purposes, you can further break it down yeah. into these shapes. So you got like the bulb here. Unfortunately, I'm 23. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry and also dang wish that were me. <laughs> so this is how you would like scientifically draw a nose again you would never draw a nose like this because it looks crazy yeah but, but if i you think want to get a sense of the structure cool to do is like let me try to find like a like a drawing <laughs> let me yeah. try to f locate a drawing the way different artistic styles abstract the nose yes which parts of it they choose to define and which parts they choose not to can really uh it can convey a lot about the character um, like just sometimes scrolling? people just draw the nostrils and nothing else and they look real cute so just scrolling through instagram just give me a moment here oh here's some good ones some good noses some good cartoon noses yes this Sometimes is from the Instagram just, user Cookie Kappa. There's the classic uh, Tumblr nose style where you just make it a different color. Just make sort of a, a, a slightly more red blob on the face. Oh, yeah. So check these out. I That's love great. these because these both capture like the diversity in nose shape while still simplifying Like when you got a head in like Katara's head here in three quarters, mm -hmm. you might want to emphasize the nose bridge as it yeah. angles in that direction. And then typically the underside of the nose is always going to be represented in some form because that's where the shadow is always going to fall 
in most lighting conditions. Yeah. So you typically won't see people. I mean, some people do do the thing where they're like, like, here's an eye, here's an eye. And the nose is just like this. And they just like, don't do an underside. Yeah. That is a stylistic choice you can make as well. Or There's you really no put, wrong answers. You can just put one dot on the near side to indicate the near side nostril. Like, like you, you draw, beep. you draw that line. Beep. And yeah. Something like That's that. That's a way to do it. Um, but this, of... this is really great. I love like the, just, just the nostrils and then the one line. Yeah. And then I really love the way they did this shape, like Sokka's really cool nose bridge highlighted here. And again, just like the shadow on the underside of the nose and then some lines to indicate like the direction of the nose bridge. But doing this effectively requires like a lot of knowledge of how actual noses look and work. So yeah, some really good, just a really good example of like how this person clearly has good understanding of all of the face anatomy. They've got these faces all at slightly different angles. Um, yep, so it's, true. It's, it's very, it's all very simplified. Got a down angle, and, slightly up angle, slightly up angle. Yeah, and they just like, it's all, all the information you need is there. They got it in there with just like the face shapes and the, 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 the lines they chose to indicate and everything else is implied. It's it really nice stuff. Really nice, yeah. And that's what that's what you can achieve when you you spend a lot. They clearly spend a lot of time practicing life drawing and understanding the anatomy in order to be able to achieve that. And as another example here, I actually got one of Bo's pieces, Sipri Tree, friend of the show. Did a a Nanami piece that, of course, rules because Bo is an incredible artist. But this is an example of if you're going for a slightly more naturalistic look. That's a good anatomy. A good way to do it is to indicate um, not so much of the nose with lines and more of it with shadow and light. Yeah. Um, as Bo does here. So you can see that the lines of the nose are literally just like, there's like a down one and then like sort of the underside of the nose. A slight indicator of like nostril over there and then a nostril here and then everything and, else is done and with the shading. little like lip dimple yeah and then everything else is only works like showing where the bridge of the nose is versus the side plane of the nose is just because there's a big there's a big shadow that indicates uh, where that stuff is and a slightly darker and cooler shadow yep. on the underside on the underside of the nose is shaded yeah. as well and so you can like do a lot of things and get away with um my shadows are sloppy because i'm not using the right brush but you understand yeah. what i'm getting at here yeah you make this even lighter and then this darker like that yeah so that's, that's something nice. you can do as well Studying other artists is like one of the best things you can do for yourself. Yeah. Cause it's like, you're, you're jumping, like you want to learn the structure of the real face and then you want to look at how artists do it and you can like skip so many steps Yeah. and be like, Oh, there are so many easy ways to depict this. And if I know the forms, it'll look nice every time. Yeah. yeah you got to do both. You got to do both though. You can't just look at artists. Yeah. You got to know why they're doing what they're doing. Cause it's not going to work if you just copy it. It's not going to work. You'll it's feel like look, a fool. It's going to look wrong. You won't feel like a fool. I was just no. exaggerating for fun. Um, okay. Let's see. Do we, do you have anything else you wanted to, to jump into Nathan? Should I throw back to you? Uh, I, I mean, I didn't have anything else planned but I'm happy to take it, take it back. If you're, if you're, you're done, I'll, I'll pass it back to you for now. Okay. Cause you know, when you, you reach your, um, you can just tell you're going to stop producing good work at this point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Pass me the ball. It's like, I Put could do more coach. drawings, but they're just going to get worse. Okay. 
We can stay we can stay on the nose train though. We can keep riding the nose the nose bus. If there's like something else you'd like in chat covered. I um, saw let us know. two two things. One was drawing Benedict Cumberbatch straight on. And one was shading a more bulbous or gnarled nose versus a petite one. Oh, interesting. So we could we could start with a with a Benny. You want to hit a Benny? Let's let's just let's just take a look. Let's take a look at, at Benny's nose. His straight on face. A little slight angle, but oh, here's here's perfectly straight on okay copy mr cumberbatch there he is there he is he's got such a unique head shape yeah so did did you want to see his whole his whole head drawn or just the nose it's got it says can you draw benedict cumberbatches straight on so I guess his nose okay. is what yeah. they're asking for. So again, we've got the you know, we can we can take a look at this sort of I'm at the I'm on the same layer. Come on. So we've got, you know, the triangle, as it were, the base triangle that, that we all we all know and love. But then the bridge is much wider, actually. Yeah, on Benny, this nose. Benny's got a wide bridge. It's got a wide bridge, so it doesn't fully come to a point here. And then we've got the nostrils, and then he's got a, a very sort of defined this part as well. The, the bulb. bulb. The bulb. And the then bulb the nostrils. Of the nostrils are like this. And you know, that's... That's sort of the shape. That's sort of the shape of it. And again, you can see the, you know, you can you can define it more in terms of like the structure, like it, the bulb. And then you know it's in three dimensions, so like there's this, there's this part, and then it sort of curves off to the sides. But uh, what's interesting is like, if you actually look at like what. You know, and, and it, it'll depend on lighting and stuff, but like what actually is is defined. Like this is one where like this part is very clearly defined. You've got this shadow down here, and you've got these bits and these bits, and then this this would all I would like I would just do with with shading. Yeah, you know, like this is very totally. And then you have like darker shading for like this whole. Bit. There's a request for you to zoom in a little bit, Nathan. Thank you. Let's get close. Let's get close in there. Yeah, He's approaching. Like, yeah, like this would all, you know, and it depends on like what style you're trying to do, but like, and we can, we don't need to be quite so. We can also up the contrast a little so we can really accentuate. The bits that are oh yeah the shadows the shadows so yeah it's like you actually do have like this separation between the nostrils and the front of the nose that you don't always sometimes it's a much more gradual and subtle and then you would have yeah the sort of the shadows from sort of shadows from under the the, the brow sort of over here there's a little there's a very sort of subtle shadow here yeah where like the forehead is meeting with the nose bridge and then shadows here and then you have a little little bit of a shine and then yeah shadows underneath the nose as well the nose is casting a shadow and then you have like very, very slight cheek on the inside here. And then there's like a a good amount of space between the bottom of the nose and the top of the lip. Sometimes the nose comes like right down there. 
Yeah, he's got a he's got a gap. And then you've got these very sort of defined, you know. It looks like you're like doing his makeup. I'm doing I'm doing some contouring. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but again, but I mean you... contouring is like knowing the planes of the face. Yeah, that's you have to have a good idea of that. And so, you know, like like that. It's sort of like that. Yeah, like everybody's everybody's face is a little different, but the, you can still use that basic that basic structure as a as a jumping off point. Like, you know, all the noses all have these different bits. It's just what they're shaped like. You have the the basic shape, you have the this part, you have the nostrils. And then, you know, you have the bridge and it sort of is in three dimensions. So like how wide the bridge is, how wide this part is, how wide the nostrils are, whether they're sort of at an up angle or a down angle. This part, whether it's, you know, more round or more, more pointy. Um, and yeah, so like in terms of shading a petite nose versus a more bulbous nose, Go look. Bulbous nose. Bulbous nose. I wish I hadn't searched that. Uh, all right. I is there like a here? Let's let's just let's just make one up. Let's just make one up from our minds, and uh, we we can do we can do a straight on and sort of side view so like for a bulbous nose you know like we'll, we can go real cartoony again we'll start with with the triangle base nostril this sort of thing and then if we wanted to make it more bulbous we could in increase the size of this part the bulb the bulb of the nose you can see the way the Nostril would sort of go into that, and again, the way that would interact with the rest of the face. And then, you know, we can we can even, we can have the bridge sort of bump out more too, like that. Yeah, bump it. And then, so yeah, like you have, you have these, these sorts of shapes, and then if we were to draw that straight on, again, we'll start with that, that sort of triangle. Nostrils, bulb, nostril. And again, increase the size of this relative to the other stuff. And maybe indicate that this part also is more, more like that. And then the, the bridge also is wider. And then nostrils we can sort of see go like this. Again, it's it's a freaking it's a halo ghost. And <laughs> just draw a ghost from Halo. Just it's go, so just easy. Just draw the ghost from Halo. And then Everyone you know, wants assuming, to tell you all these things. Assuming we have sort of a, you know, we can even get the brows indicated here, you know, sort of like that. And then again, yeah, it's a good, the, a good bulbous nose. Yeah, and then with the shading, you would just sort of... Ugh. What have you done? You know, assuming the light source is coming from... Coming from up here. Look, even if you're 23, you can Google Ghost from Halo. Yeah. If you don't want to Google it, then you're only depriving yourself of perfect nose reference. Something like this. Yeah. Something like that. And then so for I'd do it. a petite nose, again, we'll start with the, start with the triangle. The triangle guides us. The triangle guides us. 
nostril. And then we just we just make it smaller. We just make it like boop. You know? Give it like make a little upturned point. The no yeah, a little upturned point. The nostrils can be can be littler too. Everything just gets scaled down. Everything gets a little bit less less defined and subtler. And so when you you look at it straight on, nostrils, bulb. And so then we just move everything, we move everything in, right? Like we've got this part is, you know, we just sort of indicate that, indicate these. And then, yeah. Yeah, you, you wouldn't even, you probably, you know, just do something like this or even, you know, depending on how, how subtle you want to be, you could just, you could just have the nostrils and then like this. Or if you wanted to just have like one side of it, you know, if it's at like a slight angle, you can do something like this. There's so much you can do. And there's a lot of ways to do it right. In a way that will look nice. Um, yeah. Some nose stuff. Yeah, like if you were to draw it on like a face. We could draw, we could put both these noses on a face. You're going to put both these noses on one face? Yeah. This is don't, old Johnny Two it, Noses. Yeah, it's I like forbidden. Nice three quarters. Then, yeah. Forbidden art practice, drawing two noses on one face. Here's sort of the nose, basic nose structure. And then, in you know, depending on how you want to define it. It's just like something like a little nose. You maybe just draw like that. That's a classic right there. Love that one. Just like a little bit of the nose tip and then one little bit of nostril. Bobby Hill. As good to say as the Bobby Hill. Then you know, you can. Now it's going to be Bulby Hill. Bulby Hill, yeah. You can also. You want, you know, you can go the exact opposite direction and really just sort of. Define it, define everything. Like a whole. You know, he can even have like this. That's now good. he's like the, um, do you ever watch Mission Hill? Uh, no, I know you like Mission Hill. There's a, there's a bald guy, a grumpy bald guy who owns like a diner. He looks like this guy. So that's a, it's another direction you can go and you get, you get these different different sort of vibes could even could even push it further you know make it go like so bulbous you don't even see the other nostril but you're but you're still starting you know you're still starting from this 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 base structure yeah and, and then, then you can build it out or build it in the characterization you want to go with you can, uh, you, you, you get to decide as the artist how you want to do it. This face, you know, you can, even with like the same nose shape, you might decide you'd rather indicate this, this part or. I'm usually a bridge indicator personally. This part, you know, or you can go. 
you can go this route and like do do sort of a more a more abstracted idea and like shade it in that way the tumbler knows the tumbler knows yeah you know no, none of these are wrong these are all noses they're all ways of communicating that the person has a nose it's it's up to what what looks good to you and what you're trying to convey about the character that's drawing baby that's drawing it's just trying things it's just trying stuff you learn a little bit of basics and then you just try stuff on top of it yeah and try stuff that that other artists are already doing yeah see what they're doing see what you like see if you can figure out why you like it and then you know go back to life drawing you can always go back to life drawing because you will you'll find stuff that you weren't expecting yeah anytime Ooh. anyone says to me like i don't know what to draw i'm like yeah you do draw what you see it's called life drawing it's called gesture drawing and you can always do it and it's always good a real julia knows now we're just now we're just having fun um any anything else the last uh 10 ish minutes yeah we got about 10 stuff you want to try talk about if there's any questions or any quick things we could cover oh nice lip thank you this dude has witnessed a crime for sure yeah he witnessed a crime that he committed yeah potentially looks like billy zane it kind of does look like billy zane I hear a cat throwing up. Oh. Yeah. Go. Go find. Uh, go locate. And like, this is the sort, you know, like after you spend a whole bunch of time looking at reference, sometimes you'll just be like, I want to just draw the character that's in my mind. And for me, it's this person who looks kind of like Billy Zane. If Billy Zane witnessed a crime. It's fun to, to draw stuff, especially after you've been doing a lot of reference work. It's really fun yeah. to just like draw something from the dome and like surprise yourself with what you can come up with. Yeah. If this guy gives you this look, it's already too late. Uh, some quick animals slash cats. Okay. Muzzles and beaks. Muscles and beaks. Let's take a look. Let's go back to our old friend line of action. We can probably get like one animal. We can get a we can get a cat. We can get one cat. Oh, that's a good cat. Check out this cat. I wanna see, show me. Oh, look at you. What are you doing? Whoop. This is like our, um, you know, animal face shape episode. Oh, yeah. Looking at the proportions of animal faces. let's you know it's not as not as rote as uh as as person face just because i don't i don't know the uh the exact structure but we can we could try and you know we can we can puzzle it out you know we've got this sort of sort of circle and then we I mean, it's pretty much like in the nose is the whole muzzle. Yeah. 
It's so like that's sort of the instead of you know you can still you can still sort of do that that sort of triangle. It's a little bit more pointy at the bottom. And then instead of like lips, it like <laughs> has this. It has this whole. It has this whole thing. Sort of got these. Sort of got these three balls. Sort of like ball, ball, ball. Ball, ball, ball. And then they all sort of the the two top ones sort of go right up into this. Right up into the eyes. Ball, 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 ball. So. You know, if we were to. Yeah. Kind That's of, a right? cat face. So, you know, then we, we were to try and do it ourselves. We draw the face. Similar. Similar idea. Again, it's not like... The, the eye line is not the center the way it is on like a person's face. I don't know exactly the proportions. But again, we're just sort of... Yeah, you make your own system. Yeah. This is more... So, you know, it's not going to be exactly right. But again, we've got the like... This sort of chin ball down here. And then we've got the, the mouth balls. That sort of go into this sort of triangle shape. And then these sort of go right up. Sort of go right up into the... That's, uh, that's definitely like a workable way to remember it, for sure. Yeah. And then they go right up into the eyes. Make our own system. Yeah. The three ball system is going to be taught in schools. Yeah. Three balls in a triangle. You know. Add in the deets. Make it make it look more more cat like. You can deet up. Whiskers. Again, I think I, I think I made this a little like it's a little thicker. The eyes are a little smaller comparatively. I mean, you and I, Nathan, we we like to cartoon. Yeah. We make the eyes big. It's what we do. And I will not apologize. Yours. Yours looks so indignant. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're not done yet. <laughs> I like it. Um, like, and then yeah, you know, you can do the thing where you you slide it over and see what. Well, I made it way too big, first of all. And second of all, you went for a bit of a, a sassier tilt. Yeah, like yeah, give it. Wow, yeah, it's really off. <laughs> well, the the nose and and the one eye are like right on. Yeah, and then this, and then the one eye is just. And it's not like wrong. It's just like the head yeah. is tilted. I just tilted the head for some reason. Because the ear went with it as well. Yeah, so, so it's consistent. You know, that's something, something to consider. Um, yeah, I mean the the takeaway is just like look at stuff, see if you can break it down into some basic shapes, and then uh, and then practice. Yeah, try to apply it. Try to try to learn how it works and then try to apply it to your own creations. And then it'll yeah. stick in your brain. Stick in your craw. And a nice thing about it too is like if you just study a bunch of stuff, like the stuff that's stuff will stick in your brain naturally and it will be the things that you naturally gravitate towards using the most. Like I'll study a bunch of stuff and a lot of it I won't carry forward to really use for anything. But there will be like one or two things where my brain just like latches on and is like, I'll remember this forever. And it like affects the way that I approach certain things from like then on. So that's kind of like how it goes. Put in a bunch of stuff and see what sticks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's not always going to look great the first time you try it, but there, there's nothing wrong with trying it, you know? Yeah. Doesn't, it's in, doesn't it's, hurt you. It's, it's better. It's better to try it. 
And uh, unlike us, you don't have to show anyone if you try something and, and mess it up. Yeah, we're, we're cursed. <laughs> no, nothing bad happens. So we do have to show people. Yeah, and even when you show people, nothing bad happens. Like nothing when bad I tried happens. to draw the ocean. <laughs> but yeah, thanks uh, everyone for tuning in. Yeah. Thanks for being a patron at this tier. We appreciate you being here and for supporting us, and we hope you've enjoyed the class. Yeah, and if you're watching this VOD later, uh, thanks for watching, and consider supporting us on Patreon. You can uh, you can watch us do this live, ask your questions live, and have us answer them directly. Be part of this this nice little cozy cozy sesh. Yeah, when you got a chat of twelve people, it's a lot easier to you know get your questions and comments in. So yeah. And then you can also uh, participate in the uh, draw class chat in the Discord. Yeah, Share great your chat. practice if you want. It's, uh, it's a good time. That's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching. We're sorry. We're sorry. Bye. Bye.